Hello viewers, 4DIYers here with another tutorial video for everyone. In this particular video here, I'll be doing a demonstration how to diagnose the starter on your vehicle. Also, don't forget to check out my website at www.4diyers.com or click on the link in the description below. Show your support by hitting that subscribe button and help promote my channel by sharing your favorite videos on your social media pages. If you are having an issue with the starter or starting circuit, the engine of your vehicle will not turn over. If the engine does turn over, then you are having an issue relating to somewhere else on the vehicle, therefore the starter and starting circuit is functioning correctly. Now to briefly explain the starting circuit which will help you with troubleshooting. First we have the ignition switch which is the main controller of the circuit. Next is the battery that provides the power to the whole circuit. The solenoid acts as a relay and provides linear mechanical movement. And then finally the motor. The whole circuit is connected by wires and to make it a little easier to understand, the thin wires are the low amperage side and the thick wires are the high amperage side. So the ignition switch and the solenoid both operate on a low amperage circuit. The starter operates on the high amperage circuit. Then the case of the starter motor assembly is the ground or earth. When the ignition switch is turned to the start position, this activates the solenoid that provides mechanical movement and in turn turns on the high amperage circuit providing power to the motor. The motor then rotates. Once the spring-loaded start position is deactivated, everything pulls back into its neutral position. Either the power wire going into the ignition switch, the ignition switch itself, or the wire between the ignition switch and the solenoid have an extra switching device which can be relating to a neutral safety switch, clutch switch, or some type of anti-theft feature. If it is an anti-theft issue, then most likely you will have some type of light flashing on the dash relating to a security feature. Your vehicle's owner's manual should have a list describing each light in your gauge cluster if you are unsure. In order to correct a security issue, you may have a low battery in your key fob or remote. The key, key fob or remote may also have to be reprogrammed to the vehicle or there might be a module issue. Sometimes this can be repaired yourself or the vehicle will need to have its computer accessed with specific programs. Now breaking the issue down into a couple areas to help narrow down the fault. Does the solenoid click when turning the key to the start position? If yes, the possible issue can be caused by the battery, poor electrical connection, failing solenoid, failing ignition switch, failing relay, and faulty starter motor. If no, then the possible causes can be battery, bad fuse or fusible link, faulty relay, faulty switching device before the solenoid, which can be the neutral safety switch, clutch switch, or any theft feature, faulty ignition switch, poor electrical connection, and faulty solenoid. Most of these individual tests I have done in the past and will be including a full in-depth tutorial links in the description below if you are seeking more information on that particular area. Normally I prefer to start with easy accessible areas first then move my way up to more complicated areas. First starting out with an easy area, the fuse. Refer to your vehicle's owner's manual of the corresponding fuse and its location. Use a multimeter or test light to determine if the fuse is faulty. Do not visually inspect it as this isn't a reliable method. Replace the faulty fuse if required. If your vehicle is equipped with a fusible link, this will be known by its wiring diagram. A continuity test can be done between the two points, but make sure you are testing the wiring with no electronic components in between as this can risk damaging the computer. Another way is to determine where the output and input sides are for the voltage then test the voltage from each point with a multimeter. Now the battery. The battery might be either low on voltage or it's unable to handle a load. First start by measuring the voltage with a multimeter and a fully charged battery should read between 12.7 to 13.2 volts. If it's 11.9 volts or under then it's completely discharged. A load test can be done on a battery to determine its condition. Ensure the battery is fully charged and then perform a load test. Even swap out the battery with another vehicle if it meets or exceeds the requirements for the vehicle you are currently troubleshooting. Also make sure the terminals on the battery are clean, inspect the cables for any damage, and ensure the connections are tight. While we're here, using a multimeter, also test to ensure the engine has a sufficient ground. This can be done in two ways. Set the multimeter on the two-place DC voltage setting, touch the black probe on the bell housing of the transmission, engine block, and frame. The red probe should touch the positive side of the battery. Continuity tests can also be done by either using the continuity function or the lowest ohm setting. If you find a fault, clean the ground connections 
or replace the cables as needed. Testing the relay. Not all vehicles will have a relay in the circuit, so refer to your wiring diagram which will determine if the vehicle has one or not. The relay itself can be tested to determine if the coil or contacts are faulty. Next, the electrical connector can be tested to determine if it has voltage and a sufficient ground. If the relay isn't being supplied with power, then refer to the wiring diagram and find the controller of the circuit and continue to test that. As mentioned earlier, the controller may be a neutral safety switch, clutch switch, or any theft feature. Test the input power of the controller and then the output power. And you can also do a continuity test across the controller when it's disconnected. Repair the issue as needed. The starter assembly can now be tested. For this vehicle, I already have removed the starter, so I'm only left with the wires. Looking at the starter assembly removed, here the solenoid and the starter motor are connected. On some older vehicles, the solenoid might be separate, but the same testing procedure will apply. Although, the solenoid will need to be powered up to close the contact inside. First check the connection for any corrosion, damage, and ensure they are tight. If the connections weren't tightened properly before, they can loosen up over time, causing a no-start issue. We should already know the battery voltage, but if not, go back and test. Now test the voltage at the solenoid switching wire. Two people may be needed for this, or set up a camera and watch the multimeter as you turn the key. Battery voltage should be present at the connection. If not, there could be a fault with the wire or a faulty ignition switch if previous areas have passed. Now test the main power cable feeding the starter assembly. This is the high amperage side and should have battery voltage present at all times. If not, then there is a fault with the power cable. Ignition switch. Ignition switches can be tested as well. Testing procedures will vary between designs. The ignition switch can be tested for power, back probe when it's operated, and have a continuity test when disconnected from the circuit. If you find the switch itself has a poor connection, then replace. If it's not receiving power, then there is an issue with the wiring or circuit between the switch and the battery. If the ignition switch is functioning correctly and supplies power to the output side, then there is a fault between the ignition switch and solenoid. Finally, we can test the starter assembly. This is normally easier when it's removed from the vehicle. The solenoid doesn't necessarily have to be removed, but it makes things a little easier. Set the multimeter on the lowest ohm setting and test the resistance of the coil. Values will vary between solenoid designs. If it's outside that range, then the coil is failing or faulty. The case is ground, and the small terminal is the power for the coil. The solenoid also has an internal connection to switch the high amperage circuit. The solenoid may need to be powered up if it doesn't have a plunger, but do not hold the power on for an excessive amount of time as this can overheat and finally burn out the coil. If it has a plunger such as this, push it in manually and test for continuity. If no continuity is present, the terminal inside has failed. If all tests pass above, then you will have a faulty starter motor. Individual tests can be done on the starter motor, which I will include a tutorial for in the description below. As for the starter replacement, you can rebuild it yourself, which is by far the cheapest method, and I have a full in-depth tutorial on that. Have a specialist rebuild the unit, purchase a rebuild unit, or purchase a new unit. The option of a used replacement unit exists, but I'm not normally a fan of this as you're unable to determine its life expectancy. Be sure to stay up to date with my latest videos. Subscribe to my YouTube channel by clicking on the button below the video. This concludes the rest of my video. Be sure to give me a thumbs up, and if you have any comments or questions, please feel free to post them. Thank you for watching.